skin was next to yours. Mm -hmm. Um, not with clothes on, of course, but let's say even just exposed, the back of your body. You yeah. expose part of your body, mm. um, you could get infected. And so that is something that makes it a disease that we shouldn't play with. The other thing is that it looks like other diseases that cause rash. So like measles or even chicken pox. So what that means is that it's not easy for you to just by looking at the symptoms or the rash. So you can only get it if someone else has it and comes into contact with you. That's the only way. Um, so that's the other tricky part. There's some evidence that people who are not showing the rash, but who have had exposure to the virus, can also transmit it. How are you exposed to the virus? So let's say person A comes into contact with somebody who clearly has the rash. Okay. Okay but doesn't develop symptoms. But in medical terms, we'll say the person is infected because he's been exposed to the virus. The virus has gotten into the system. The person doesn't develop the rash, but may still be able to transmit the virus. So it's not just about people who have obvious rash. But if, you're, if you don't have the rash, and we've talked about exposed skin, yes. then how do you transmit that to somebody else? Because if someone has a rash, you would visibly see that there are some lesions on the person's exactly, body yeah. and you can avoid the person. Yes. But where there's no rash, um, how does that spread? So that it? goes into the modes of transmission. Um, the main ones are, of course, the physical contact. Mm -hmm. So anything physical, from a hug, from just bodies scratching each other, even from intimacy, like kissing, for example. But it can also be spread by a person who has it when you have a direct face-to-face -face conversation, for example. So just talking. So it can be, yes, exactly. There's a potential for droplet infection. So that is a situation where the person may not have a rash, but can still transmit it, for example. As I said, the evidence is minimal. But even if one documented case of transmission using that mode without somebody with a rash exists, then in an outbreak situation, you want to be very careful. Um, and so those are the things we, mm. we want everybody to be aware of so that we can all protect ourselves. It means that we are all at risk then. It doesn't matter what demographic, male, female, adult, child. Yeah. It, everybody's at risk. That's the truth. Everybody is at risk. And so that is why we need to, to take some of the measures. I think one of the things COVID allowed us to do was to take up the habit of washing our hands, which is a very... Uh, safe way, or one of the easiest ways of preventing disease transmission. But I guess um, COVID left, and our hand hygiene practices also left. Mm. And so maybe this is a time for us to go back and this time stay. A lot of us had sanitizers on our on ourselves. We had sanitizers either in our bags or you know, clipped somewhere on our body, and we were using them. But these days, we don't do them. And so we so need to go back to... We need to go back to those. Social distancing days. Because you uh, said talking to an infected person may you yes. know, pass the droplets on. So then social distancing. Well, not social distancing the way we, we knew it in COVID. I, I think there was a lot of panic with that. Um, so handshakes are okay? Well, you can shake hands. But again, like I said, how would you know if this person has it or hasn't? So... Practicing hand hygiene after shaking hands. In our society, not shaking hands is not acceptable. Okay. And even though during COVID we're doing the face bombs and the others, mm -hmm. we've literally stopped. We're still shaking hands. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still touching door handles. We're still touching surfaces. And so that is why it is important that as much as possible we try to practice hand hygiene so that in case we have been exposed, we can be able to, to get rid of the virus on our skin. What's the treatment regimen for those who have come um, into contact with this and are on admission? Give us an idea of what the, is being done to them, what's happening to them right now. Contacts or cases? Cases. Cases. So for those diagnosed, what we, the terminology we use is supportive treatment. So what that means is that we're not given medicines to cure the virus. Is there a cure? There's no cure for the virus, the disease would evolve itself and the person would heal. What we need to do is to give what we call supportive treatment. And so if there's a fever, we give medicine for the fever. 
the rash we manage so we make sure that there's some disinfection to reduce the risk of spread and then give some antibiotics if we need to prevent what we call secondary infection so basically the treatment is supportive and hydration is also very important they need to get in um, a lot of fluid to ensure that you know water is life as we say and so those are the mainstays of uh, managing persons who have mpox and what happens to contacts so cases they get supportive treatment what happens to persons who have been exposed to persons who have uh, uh, acquired the virus okay so we follow them up and um, the incubation period is up to 21 days okay. so what we would usually do is to i i we categorize the kind of risk of exposure. So somebody who just, let's say, casually is in a room with a person might be a lower risk compared to somebody who had a physical contact with the person. Maybe you live with the person and the person Exactly. Has... So if they're in the same room, then the risk is higher. So for those people, ideally, like we did with COVID, we would ask them to undergo what we call quarantine. And so they would be... Um, reduce their ex exposure to others mm -hmm. whilst we monitor them for, for symptoms. any symptoms and okay. if they start developing any symptom then we would do the necessary laboratory investigation to okay. confirm so 21 days up is the quarantine days. period up to 21 after days. 21 if you don't present any symptoms then you're free yeah, to we'll go. consider you free. all right let's talk about um can you fully recover from the disease is this something that is you you test positive and then later you test negative, is that what happens? Yes. And it's, it's if, if you think about it like chicken pox, for example, we know a lot of people get chicken pox and they still, you know, get well after. So it's not the case that, unless, of course, it results in death. Okay. And the case fatality rate for this disease is, is quite low. Um, in some so places, less than 1%. you're not likely to die from yes. monkey pox. So it's not likely to kill. It's just that... It's not a disease, I don't think any disease looks nice, but clearly, <laughs> it doesn't look if, nice. if, if, if somebody has that rash, it's not something that is pleasant to the eye. And of course, they can also develop complications. And so those are the things that are of concern. If the complications are also not managed, then that could be the reason why they die. But the disease itself is not likely to kill. Mm. What's the link with monkeys? Because it's a <laughs> monkey pox. So if I don't have a monkey in my house, am I less likely to get the virus? It was actually one of my concerns when you were introducing the, the, the discussion earlier on. I think WHO has asked that we move away from, from using the word um, monkey. monkey in its description. Mm -hmm. So we see MPOX now, and if you look at our, our press releases, it's MPOX we talk mm -hmm. about. It started with monkeypox. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's found in animals as well. And... Um, and so, and it's, there's no evidence that one particular animal is the source of the disease. So the people are just being mean to monkeys. Well, so probably that's why we are politically correct now, and we are moving on. So now we are apologizing to the monkeys for giving you a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get to. So it's not just one particular animal, no. but is there a certain species of animals? Maybe the you know, still not giving monkeys a bad name, but monkey family, the, the gorillas and the, the apes. There's, there's the evidence out there. It's, it's not firm on which specific animal. Okay. And so any animal that you see with that rash, I am guessing for most game, uh, because domestic animals, maybe not. But if you see it, find any animal with it, it's a virus that is also in animals as well. Um, so it's a zoonotic disease. It can affect humans and animals, which means that any animal that you find with that rash could potentially also be spreading. Okay. Evidence. Before we wrap up, just walk us through the symptoms, what to look out for. If you feel or you see what, where do you go? Mm -hmm. I've never been comfortable talking about symptoms because mm -hmm. then people start saying, hey, you have this disease or you don't. But given that we still, but the, the primary information I want to put across is that if you're not well, go to a health facility. But be that as it may, the main symptom is the rash, which doesn't start as a classic rash that we see in the pictures we, we see, where you know you see these filled uh, lesions. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it may start with just a simple rash that doesn't have any fluid in it. Looks like a heat rash. Exactly. So you might think maybe it's measles or and even at some point it looks like chickenpox as well. 
And so it's it, it can itch, and then there's also a lot of pain actually. That's the that's the the, the rash is painful. The itching may be because of other things as well. Mm. Um, so, do, but the main thing is that the rash go undergoes certain changes. And we are not asking that if you see a rash, wait to see. Yes, whether because how it's do you know if it's it's not chicken pox or measles? Because yes. they, they look exactly. So that is why it is important that if you find any rash, you go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Then there's fever. Fever is non-specific. A lot of diseases can give you a feeling of your body being hot, mm -hmm. and so you can't just look at fever. And the the point I made earlier on that there are some who would not develop the rash. But they may have these symptoms, the sore throat, the fever, um, their lymph nodes swell. So there are various parts of your body in the armpits, maybe in the groin area. You feel the lymph nodes are swollen. And all those things can point to mpox. But the only way we can be able to tell is to do a laboratory test. And that's why it's important that anybody who feels unwell, especially if you feel even exposed to somebody who has a disease, please do get close to the health facility. And let's get that checked out. How soon would you start to feel symptoms after you've been exposed? It could be within 24 hours. Okay. But usually between 5 to 21 days. So that's usually the incubation period. And so those are um, the key things. Once you get exposed, uh, you need to look out for these. But um, if, if you feel unwell, as I said, the key thing is to go to the health facility. And all the health facilities are equipped to deal with employees? If you get there and it's suspected the necessary measures have been put in place even if the facility itself is not capable of we have referral mechanisms to ensure that um, persons are properly taken care of government will pick up the cost will you pay the bill for this one so for all public health um, priority diseases it's borne by the government and so even the lab tests it's pcr just like we're doing for COVID. Mm. it's paid for so it's not done in every laboratory. There are designated laboratories where these are done, and the cost is borne by the government. Doc, thank you for sitting with us today. Thank Quick you. education on how we can, you know, keep safe out there. Going back to hand hygiene is a key one for us as yeah. well. And so we appreciate the time that you've spent with us. Thank Dr. You. Dennis Lies, the Deputy Director at the Disease Surveillance Department of the Ghana Health Service. He's given us crucial information about MPOX, hand hygiene less physical contact and if you have any symptoms if you feel unwell report to the nearest health facility you will be tested and if you're tested positive for mpox the treatment regimen will start for you you can recover from this so don't be too scared but be safe out there so alert for you mpox Cases have been confirmed in Ghana, and you need to be safe. Ghana Health Service is making this education available to you so you can be safe. We'll take a quick break. When we return, remember that I said Accra is going through a lot, and we are in the Central Business District. Kafri Day is with the Chief Executive Officer of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Mr. Michael Akpo Alote, who is going round shops educating traders on why they need to keep off the pavement. It's been peaceful so far from what our team has observed and the education is going on. Some challenges are being identified on come the road. To town. As well. no, I, I will start come to town. I will start come to town. Who's in charge of this area? Uh, sorry. The yes, what metro? The sub metro. Yes. Who's the director of the sub metro? Two and then now. Now it's in two and then. First is, uh, uh, listen, Tituani is the now. Now it's Tituani. Oh, who was that? For uh, this man, the Messi. And the Messi have gone to Okago South. And Tituani had to come back. Messi. Yes, sir. That before he moves to Okago South, yes, he should sir. fix this problem before he moves. Okay, sir. I'll do that, sir. And head office is not going to pay for this. Okay, sir. Okay. The Sam Metro will pay for this. Yes, sir. They should fix it before Friday. Yes, sir. It's a direct order to fix the problem in three days from Mayor Alate doing a walkabout and spotting out problems. This is what some people call management by walking around and seeing exactly what is on the ground. He was asking some of his team whether they actually visit the areas to see what the problems are. And he has taken the opportunity to, to make the move into Accra Central to find out exactly what's happening. I did your back, make no worry. I did your, your level. 
Hello? So they are being asked to move their staff off the pavement. They've covered the pavement. Wow. It has to move. That's a better motive. Motive in crime. 